Welcome to the hook. Today, number 27, I've got the USA Eagles versus the Brazil Los Tupis. And you know, just you know, going into things and how how are things going down, you're wondering, well, there's really not much to talk about when it comes to the Tupis. They went up to they went up to uh, Langford last week and got the brakes beat off of them by a down Canada team who had basically, you know, they, they lost three in a row. You weren't expecting them to do much, but, you know, the snow came in, hooked everybody up, and things are going further forward. Um, looking at the roster, uh, we'll get into that after we talk about USA versus Chile. But it's important to know that when, like, where where are we going with this? Uh, USA should have, man. There were at least I want to say three try opportunities in the first half where we just jacked it up. Uh, we scored, you know, pretty fast uh, three minutes in, and then it took you know us another fifteen minutes to put another one on the board, and we were just playing pretty crappy overall and we sort of then went into I wouldn't say a death match but we just slugged it out with Chile which they had done previously against the Argentina 15 the week before they had basically brought in uh you know I would say they raised their level with their backs against Argentina 15 but reduced uh what they had on the on their front line so you had more of a B more of a like B-side going up against uh, the Argentina 15 uh, up front. And in the back line, it was a little better than when they, you know, when you think about it, whereas they flipped that equation and brought in pretty much their best pack against us and, you know, left some of the backs behind. And what you would have thought that the Chileans wouldn't be putting up much of a fight during this uh, tournament because they've entered this tournament with a different head coach every year. Every year, the head coach has quit basically in November. So, you know, the scoreline being what it was, you're still going, hey, you know, how is this going on, you know? So, end up beating them... 48 13 like that and it was you know it was a good it was a good route uh in the second half we ended up just turning it on uh there were some things i liked from some of the debutantes and there were some things i hated from some of the debutantes which we'll get into uh later on but uh I, it was an incomplete uh when it comes to that you saw what we could do in the second half when our offense is clicking and the chemistry is there, and then you bring in, uh, you know, subs when our chemistry is going and we can do things with subs that we haven't done in the past, and it just raises our level, which is, you know, what I want to be able to see. I want to put starters on the bench because we're just so deep, right? And let's look at what Brazil is bringing to us. I've got... Rugby forecast for you to go at the end, and we'll talk about the rest of the ARC as well. But moving on, Brazil's first 15. We've got Michel, I think Ma Michael, I don't know, Van uh, Vazinha Olimpio at loose head, Jan Rossetti at hooker, tight head, we've got Yardel Veterato at number four lock, we've got. Lucas Bruxino Piero. At number five lock, we've got Kleber Gelado Diaz. At open side flanker, we've got Arthur Burgo. At blind side flanker, we've got Matuas Matias Daniel. At number eight, we've got Andre Buda Arruda. At scrum half, we've got Laurent Buda Cohet. At fly half, we've got Josh Reeves. At a 11, which is open blindside wing. We've got Robert Tenorio at inside center. We've got 
Moises Duke. The outside center, we've got Felipe Sanseri. At open side wing, we've got Stefano Giantorno. At fullback, we've got Lucas Zé Tranques. On the bench, we've got Angelo Marcucci, at, which is a reserve hooker. Reserve loose head is Lucas Abud. Reserve tight head is Math Matuas Blade Roca. He has a blade? I don't know. Maybe it's Blade. At number 19, we've got Diego Lopez. Number 20, we've got Michael Ilha Moras. At number 21, we've got Daniel Maranjao Lima. 22, we've got Ariel Rodriguez. 23, we've got Det Vet Van de Kirk. Um, of these, only Daniel Maranjao is a debutante. So, apparently he's a very promising player. Uh, they've sent a lot of, been able to send a lot of guys to New Zealand to play club rugby, and then you've got, you know, a bunch of New Zealand guys because I guess they're a Tier 3 country coming in and uh, joining in in the club system and qualifying for Brazil to play. Very interesting stuff going on there. Now, uh, getting into the U.S. side and the things we'll go into after, you know, the announcement is... At loose head prop, we've got Hula Hall among the low. At hooker, we've got Dylan Fawcett. At number three, tight head, we've got Chris Bowman. At number four lock, we've got Ben Landry. At number five lock, we've got Nick Savetta. At open blind side flanker, I don't know why I keep saying open side, man. <laughs> blind side flanker, Saul Mooching. Open side flanker is Hanko Hemischeis. At number eight, we've got Cam Dole. At scrum half, Sean Davis. Fly half, Will McGee. Blindside wing, Josh Whippy. Inside center, Bryce Campbell. Outside center, Dylan Owdsley. Open side wing, captain, Nate Augsburger. Fullback, Mikey Teo. On the bench, we've got Peter Malcolm, reserve hooker. Tony Perpura, reserve loose head. At 17, at 18, we've got Angus McClellan, reserve tight head. Number 19, reserve lock, we've got Matt Jensen. Maybe he's a reserve flanker. We'll see. At number 20, reserve flanker, Tony Lamborn. Number 21, reserve scrum half, Ruben De Haas. Number 22, reserve fly half, fullback, Ben Sima. At reserve center, Paul Lasique. So, you know, we could talk about a lot of the thing, good things that happened last week. And, you know, there were some great things. Malone Aljabori, it looks like that guy can score from anywhere. Paul Asike, uh, you better be a prop trying to tackle him because he is a bad man. He is a bad man. And then, uh, you know... Going through this, you know, back up to the front, you know, Fawcett, I really liked how he played in the first 15 minutes. I'm guessing James Hiltebrand is now unavailable. He lives in Australia, plays for Manly, and he has a real job. So I want to see him come over to the MLR probably or get back in with the NRC. So otherwise, uh, you know, he, he needs to be playing top-level rugby. I know Shoot Shield is, you know, top is great club rugby, and it's probably, you know, where it needs to be. But I want him to get paid to play rugby. Whether that's over there or over here, I don't care. So, and then we got Chris Bowman. This is kind of weird. So Chris wasn't named uh, in the squad originally, either due to availability or just because they didn't, they didn't want him. He wasn't named in the fall squad either. Uh, and personally, um, uh, I, I don't like his form of late. He has not played well of late. Uh, last summer, he took just tons of penalties at the tight head spot. Uh, I, he has to have played, like, he needed to play better and play a lot longer in the uh, Leicester system for me to, you know, want to, I guess, give minutes to him. Uh, ben Landry, you know, replacing Nate Brakely at four, I'm thinking Brakely is unavailable because he also has a real job. However, Brakely will probably be on the MLR. 
uh, Rugby United New York side that plays in associate member season this year. Um, and then we see Hanko Hamishai being available again, so he gets to start at 7. Uh, the interesting thing for me is Solm. Uh, I think he's more of a bench player right now, and you want to get him to play at a high level, but uh, there were some holes in his game last week, and maybe they're fixed. I don't know. But that's all right. And, you know, going to the, uh, the back line, uh, Sean Davies, man, I've been clamoring for him the, the entire series. He should have been starting at 9. Um, and we're finally going to get to see the Sean Davies-Will McGee pairing for the majority of the match. And then I'm guessing that will um, be flopped to Ruben de Haas and Ben Sima in the second half. So that will be an interesting thing to uh, look at. Josh would be moving over from 14 to 11. Uh, I like it because, you know, he's sort of the same athlete as, uh, not same athlete, but same like body type as Ryan Matias. So they're both big uh, backline wings. Love it. Um, the, he's fast and he is a dynamic player. We just need to like get him in the motions. Um, Bryce Campbell, Dylan Owsley, like they've just been a great pairing. The interesting thing for me is Nate Augsburger. Uh, going into the 14 slot um, makes me wonder if uh, one of our wings is uh, injured in Matias or if it, this is all just, you know, minutes management and checking out lineups. Uh, Alex Elkins has been released from the ARC camp and he has reported to the Houston Sabercats where he will start against Nola Gold this weekend. So that's huge, right? Um, Really want to see him play. And then on the bench, you're seeing Peter Malcolm. He flew in to camp. Uh, I think, you know, he was available the entire time. It was just based on bringing in the guys when you need them. So um, going to love to see him play in the second half. Tony Lamborn, interestingly enough, is on the bench. I would have sat him and had Malone Aljabori on the bench um, just for minutes management because we got a big game coming up against Uruguay. Um, Matt Jensen, I'm, he's been in camp. I guess he hasn't been available. I'm not sure why. And it really doesn't matter to me because that dude is a giant. I want to see him play at five. Um, that about wraps it up where, you know, how I like look at this roster. But, um, you know, going into it. Uh, well, so two years ago, we were in the same spot. We went into Brazil during the ARC with a new head coach, um, to an extent. And the squad was a bit different uh, in makeup and I would say in attitude. John Mitchell had just been hired and we were post-Rugby World Cup, right? We were down, we were down for the count. And we just, you know, let this tier three country like beat us. Uh, we did not play a good game. We played down to our opponent and it, it hurt us really bad. Um, so what do I want to see in this game? So you saw what we saw in Chile. I want to see an even game. More or less, I want to see us put about 60 to 70 on the two-piece because here's my comparative scoring, right? Um, we beat, uh, the, we beat the Canadians, was it by 17 points, something like that? Okay, so next. Uh, we need to, they... They put 50 on Brazil, so we need to be doing more than that. Even though it's a way, even though playing down in Brazil is tough, we need to ratchet up and be out for blood like sharks. So, uh, courtesy of Rugby Forecast, what do I got? 26% uh, chance of winning is Brazil, uh, 18 points. 72% chance of winning is the United States, the scoreline, so 18 to 26 in favor of the United States. Um... Yeah, uh, I don't, I'm not put, picking that scoreline. I'm picking, you know, USA by 50 or 60. That's what I want to see. That's what we need to do. We need to show progress. We need to be able to run all over them, doing our systems almost perfectly so that we're prepped for Uruguay. Um, the other, the other predictions for my rugby forecast are uh, Uruguay at Chile. Chile with a 23% chance 
and Uruguay, Uruguay with the 74% chance, and uh, 20 to 25 in favor of Uruguay. And then we've got Canada versus Argentina 15. Canada goes down to Argentina, so um, <laughs> it's going to be a bad game. I'm telling you right now. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be, they're just, they're probably going to lose by 30. Uh, but our friends at Rugby Forecast have them losing by, um, what is it, 33, I think. Yeah. So, let's get into it, man. <laughs> you know, 31. 31 is what I got. Was it? No. No. 41. Jeez. Okay. So, Argentina 15 has a 97% chance of winning at home, with Canada having a 3% chance of winning uh, down in Argentina. So, uh, that about wraps it up for this episode of The Hook. You can catch me uh, next week. I'll be on Earful of Dirt on Monday nights at 10 p.m. And for the final America's Rugby Championship prediction, will be out next Thursday, and the timeline is obviously, of course, based on when I get the roster release, but USAR has been awesome. 48-hour rule, everything. So, again, Aaron Casper for The Hook. You can catch me at the Stro Bro, and you can catch me at Earful of Dirt. Go Eagles!